when I read about groups like yours, what I hear is that you want to ban books, your book banners. <laughs> and um, Pen America is a literary and free speech organization that tracks uh, what they call book bans around the country. I've pulled a, a little bit of their data. Uh, they say of the th that 874 unique titles were banned between July 1st, 2022 and December 1st, 2022. And then they break it down here by category. The most common category is books that include themes or instances of violence and physical abuse. And then that's 44% had that as the reason for the ban. Then there's others that the, the next category is topics on health or well-being for students, and then themes of grief and death. And then the the second half here is 30% of the um, bands had to do with characters of color or themes of race and racism. 26% had to do with LGBTQ plus characters or themes. 24% sexual experience between characters. And the smallest category here is mention of teen pregnancy, abortion, or sexual assault. I would say it's those three categories in the middle, LGBT and characters of color that get a lot of the attention. And the what the the impression you get is that conservatives just don't want books about race or gay or trans people in the school libraries. Is that true? No, that is not true. I mean, there are some people who probably feel that way. But yeah. that certainly is not the majority. Just out of curiosity, was that school libraries or was that like in was that across the board, which would include probably school and also like local public libraries? School book bans. OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. Index of school book bans. Yes. So, so the first important thing to know is that Pen America, when they use the word banned, it, they're using it in a way that no other person, I think, in the history of the universe has ever used it. So Pen America calls any restriction on a book, a ban. Mm -hmm. And that includes, and they are open about this, like they have said this publicly, that includes if you were to move a book from the elementary school library to the middle school library or to the middle school to the high school. And they yeah. even include in their ban definition, um, moving a book from the elementary shell. Like if you had a school that was K-8, if a book had been in the on the shelves for the younger kids and instead got moved to the older kids section, Pen America hmm. would also consider that a ban. So, so you're saying they're trying to juice their numbers a little bit by including these uh, just kind of lib this sort of library organization process. In yeah, no, the they definitely. Yeah. I, I mean, Feng Shui have... is a book ban now, apparently, Zach. I mean, not that it's really Feng Shui, but like legitimately, it's you know we. I could imagine librarians could make different decisions about appropriateness. Like, really, this is librarians making judgment calls, which I would imagine yep. they've done as curators for a really long time. The but, other okay, but that's one aspect. I mean, again, I'll bring it back to my Florida experience. There was a whole process they went through where they were like, look, libraries, you're on notice. We've got a list of categories here that is not appropriate for the school to have uh, books about and um the librarians had to go through and call a bunch of material is that uh, it on its on the surface level it that seems kind of authoritarian it was that yeah and also again like at the end of the day local communities kind of do need to figure out where they're going to land on this and i would not expect right. every school district to make the same decisions what yeah. i would say is that again there's been a lot of books written recently mm -hmm. that are like books about how that would leave a child with the impression that the police hate black people, mm -hmm. that the police constantly shoot black men. These, these are the most banned books I'm I'm bringing up just in um, case and this so, falls into that category. And so I do think it's true that some of these books that, again, have that sort of like gratuitous profanity, vulgarity, et cetera. So I would always say, like, have a conversation about it and, and, and you mm -hmm. see whether or not you think it's appropriate. Now, this book right here, this book is gay. That's a book. Mm -hmm. Again, it's got this like really friendly looking cover. It's, you know, the pride progress flag. If you dive into that book, the book 
contains explicit instructions on how minors can go on an app to meet adult men for sex. Hmm. Wait, so, yeah. So if you, so part of it is like these books and gender queer, which is also a really, again, in the name of inclusion, it's the memoir of this, of this person. And it's a graphic novel and it has pornographic, you know, you see explicit, oral sex going on in it and and, and it looks use of a strap just, on and there's talk of like hmm. yeah, there's a, yeah and, there's a strap well, on these, it, just yes, for, our, all, for our audio listeners gender queer and a book called flamer were the topped banned books for the first half of the 2022-2023 school year and so um, it's it's yeah. easy to say oh these people are against this book because it's an lgbt book that is not the reason that they're against the book the, they're mm-hmm. against the book because it is I mean, technically, I think pornography has to be photographed. So I guess maybe it's not porn pornographic because it's it's illustrations. It's a graphic novel, so it looks like cartoons. But really? it's very this is gender queer, right? Yeah, th- this is gender queer, but it's very explicit. And what has happened is, like, again, you have a bunch of these books written in recent years. They're it's not like it's a book, and there's characters who are LGBT characters, which. I, I really don't think that there'd be any uproar over that. It, instead, these are books that are sort of like the whole point of the book is about gender ideology, sexual orientation. Um, they're kind of like, it's kind of like the modern version of the coming of age book mm-hmm. where it's like, you know, my journey as a, as a, what as a gay person or trans person or whatever. And the content is, in the opinion of many people and parents, including very sort of like Democrats for life and even progressives, that it, it that the content is not appropriate for a school library. Mm. I don't hear there are certainly some people who, mean, who would say you know, this shouldn't be in my town library, and that's certainly yeah. in my position. But isn't there there's always been a discomfort among adults when we're talking about coming of age stories like you know t- teens engaging with sexuality in any way is yep. always going to be controversial um i so isn't it really an age appropriate question like gender queer should not be in an elementary school i don't know exactly how i feel about it i i i have not read it so i don't know but maybe something like that could be appropriate in some high school library like what well, what, real issue what are your... is a lot of middle school libraries so we're talking about a book the... I've, I've unfortunately read it and middle school is obviously a very hard time in a child's life to sort of uh, figure out standards of appropriateness right like i think that there are lots of things where it's very easy for reasonable adults of sound mind to say a 16 year old has probably already been exposed to this idea um but it's a lot harder to make that ruling about an 11 year old or a yeah. 12 year old i mean at least for me having read gender queer which is like a few hours of my life that i'll never be able to get back just the fact that you have these like dildo strap-ons and like this this very explicit cartoonish use of sex toys, at least to me, it feels a little bit different than the coming of age novels that perhaps all of us read growing up, where it was a little bit more like, I don't know, person meets somebody, they have a big crust, they fall in love. Okay, now they're experimenting. I don't know. Like that type of thing feels, at least to me, much more developmentally appropriate, much more relatable for a lot of teenagers than the like somehow as you know preteens or teenagers we have access to a bunch of sex toys like yeah Yeah, like this definitely isn't judy bloom so when i was growing up it was like the controversy was sort of over judy bloom's book then again maybe i won't yeah which like that is just not even in the realm of what a lot of these books are now there's a whole genre for women especially for girls that's like the losing the virginity genre of book and the like how much emotional heft is placed on that and whether you should do it with somebody you love and and whether it will be scary and painful and this is like i think in a different league yeah so yeah. again I, I think that people could have a kind of a robust or discussion argument about gender queer in at the high school mm-hmm. level um i i suspect i would probably think it's not really appropriate for a school library but the truth is i'm not even a hundred percent but but instead what's happened is like it's it it's painted as people are against this book because it has LGBT 
people in it. Yeah, there's more to the story, what you're saying. Yeah. And I but, just don't think that that's an accurate description of the red flags and why people uh-huh. are bothered by these books. I but think then the, I see other story. I see other books on the list, like The Bluest Eye, which is like a Toni Morrison book from the 70s about a young black girl who's trying to, you know, come to terms with her racial identity and place in America. And, um, you know, that raises my eyebrow that anyone would not want that available to be checked out at a, at a school library. Again, I don't know the details if it this was a case of moving from uh, one library to another library, but the fact that it's one of the more listed as one of the more frequent banned ones makes me think that someone doesn't like it being there probably for you know these uh anti critical race theory reasons where i get i guess the the thing that is complicated about it to me is that these debates do seem to like the idea that they're going to happen in a state house or some you know a, a, a or from a governor's office like the the the, a governor or a legislator is going to know how to arrange a school library. It seems to me a dubious proposition, and that's why I my my favorite solution to all of this is just more school choice, where people <laughs> can go to the woke school if they want to go to the woke school, or they can go to the sort of austere classical academy if they want to, or the science academy, and I feel like yep. that would solve a lot of these problems. Um, you know, you've still got the kind of traditional public schools that I guess would still be battlegrounds for this. But it doesn't seem to me that having the school library be subject to like state level congressional debates is really the healthiest way for us to move forward in in this realm. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, at the end of the day, too, right? Like communities sort of decide what what they want and how they want to be. And so when we see some of the craziest stuff that gets a huge reaction, at the end of the day, like if that district in Vermont, this is what they want, you know, they either, if they don't like it, they vote out the people that they have that they have there. So I do see this as being a more of a local. Yeah. I just think as soon as you get to like that state level, I don't know, it just feels like it's too unwieldy, I think. And communities mm-hmm. are really different. Um, so I agree with you on that. And of course, like, again, like I 100 percent agree with you, too. Like, there's just no such thing as a one size fits all thing in terms of schools. You see within families, even you could have three kids that just thrived at their local high school. And one of the kids just didn't work and it wasn't a fit. So I, I never pretend that school choice is like this magic bullet that's going to solve all problems because there are no magic bullets really for anything. But I certainly think that one piece of the puzzle of dealing with this parental concern slash distress slash like like there's always been issues with parents and it's like "Ah, I don't really feel like this teacher aligns with my values let's just say but I think for some people it's gotten to the point where they actually feel like the school is really actively working against their values and even trying to Mm -hmm. drive a wedge between parent and child and with a lot of the gender policies I mean you really can't deny that like like when the policy states were going to be putting your child on a plan and you don't have a right to know about it. So I, I think you're right about school choice thing and the book thing too, like the bluest eye. I mean, people have been upset about that book since I can remember when we had to read it in high school. So I also just think there's just, there's people's threshold for what they think is okay in books is always going to vary, which is why, which is why like, to your point, like it can't be, oh, this person's upset, this book has to go. I mean, I do think that though, however, like let's get serious, right? Like we're not, Toni Morrison is not in the same category as a lot of these garbage books that have suddenly appeared on awards lists and in these libraries. Hope you enjoyed that clip from Just Asking Questions. You can watch another one here or the full episode there. We have an audio version of the podcast, which you can subscribe to using the link in the description. And subscribe to Reason TV for notifications when these episodes go up every Thursday. Hope to see you then.